Hi, and welcome back. So a new study out of the University of Michigan has shown that one strength marker in particular, if not optimal, has shown a clear link to faster biological aging. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of the University of Michigan has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Noah Fromson of the University of Michigan that covered a study that looked into a single strength marker that, if it was poor, was directly linked to faster biological aging. The study was published in the Journal of Cachexia, Sarcopenia and Muscle and there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Everyone ages at a different pace. Birthdays may be the same, but bodies will be different. That's why two 50-year-olds, despite having lived the same number of years, will probably have different biological or epigenetic ages, meaning that a host of intrinsic and extrinsic factors have caused them to age at varying paces, with different levels of risk for diseases and possibly even an early death. Lifestyle choices such as diet, smoking cigarettes, sleep and exercise all contribute to accelerating your biological age beyond your chronological age or your birthday number. In other words, your body is aging faster than expected. And for the first time, researchers have found that muscle weakness marked by grip strength, a proxy for overall strength capacity, is associated with accelerated biological aging. Specifically, the weaker your grip strength, the older your biological age. And this is according to the results published in the Journal of Cachexia, Sarcopenia and Muscle. Researchers at Michigan Medicine modeled the relationship between biological age and grip strength. This was done with 1,274 middle-aged and older adults. They used three age acceleration clocks based on DNA methylation, a process that provides a molecular biomarker and estimator of the pace of aging. The clocks were originally modeled from various studies examining diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, physical disability, Alzheimer's disease, inflammation, and early mortality. The results clearly revealed that both older men and women showed a marked association between lower grip strength and biological age acceleration. And this was across all of the DNA methylation clocks. Mark Peterson, PhD, the lead author and associate professor of physical medicine and rehabilitation at the University of Michigan said, we've known that muscular strength is a predictor of longevity and that weakness is a powerful indicator of disease and mortality. But for the first time, we have found strong evidence of a biological link between muscle weakness and actual acceleration in biological age. This suggests that if you maintain your muscle strength across the lifespan, you may be able to protect against many common age-related diseases. We know that smoking, for example, can be a powerful predictor of disease and mortality. But now we know that muscle weakness could be the new smoking. Jessica Fall, PhD, a co-author of the study and research associate professor at the University of Michigan's Institute for Social Research said, the real strength of this study was in the eight to 10 years of observation in which lower grip strength predicted faster biological aging measured up to a decade later. Past studies have shown that low grip strength is an extremely strong predictor of adverse health events. One study found it's a better predictor of cardiovascular events such as myocardial infarction than systolic blood pressure, this being the clinical hallmark for detecting heart disorders. Professor Peterson and his team have previously shown a robust association between weakness and chronic disease and the resulting immortality across populations. This evidence, coupled with this study's recent findings, Peterson says, shows potential for clinicians to adopt the use of grip strength as a way to screen individuals for future risk of functional decline, chronic disease and even for mortality. 
Professor Peterson said, screening for grip strength would allow for the opportunity to design interventions to delay or prevent the onset or progression of these adverse age-related health events. We've been pushing for clinicians to start using grip strength in their clinics, and only in geriatrics has this sort of been incorporated. However, not many people are using this, even though we've got hundreds of publications showing that grip strength is a really good measure of health. The investigators say that more research is needed to understand the connection between grip strength and age acceleration, including how inflammatory conditions contribute to age-related weakness and mortality. Previous studies have shown that chronic inflammation in aging is a significant risk factor for mortality among older adults. This inflammation is associated with lower grip strength and may be a significant predictor on the pathway between lower grip strength and both disability and chronic disease multimorbidity. Additionally, Peterson says studies must focus on how lifestyle and behavioral factors such as physical activity and diet can affect grip strength and then age acceleration. Professor Peterson closed by saying healthy dietary habits are very important, but I think regular exercise is the most critical thing that somebody can do to preserve health across the lifespan. We can show it with a biomarker like DNA methylation age, and we can also test it with a clinical feature like grip strength. So regular exercise that involves gripping with your hands, such as weight training, will obviously improve your grip strength. But how else can you improve it? People naturally assume that squeezing a soft ball or using a grip spring will build up strength. But a lot of the muscles that affect grip are actually in the forearm. One of the best ways to build forearm strength is to use a flex bar. This is what they look like. And they sell for around $30 for a set of three on Amazon.com. I'm now going to play a short clip from a how-to video with regard to flex bars. There's a link to the full video in the description below. The flex bar is a super cool piece of equipment that can be used to strengthen everything from your elbow down to your fingers, and that includes grip strength. For this exercise, we're going to be working the extensor muscles of the forearm, or these ones. It also helps with pain on the outside of the elbow or tennis elbow. For this exercise, you start with the arm you're going to be focusing on at the bottom of the flex bar. You twist the bar by bending your wrist backwards and then you move the bar out in front of you and control the reverse movement until it ends in a stretch of your extensor muscles. For this next exercise, we're looking at increasing strength in the forearm flexors or alleviating pain in the inner side of the elbow for climber's elbow. The flexor exercise looks quite similar to the extensors one. You still start with the arm you're going to be focusing on at the bottom, but this time you twist the bar by bending your wrist towards you and then bring it out in front of you to control the release into a stretch position. Again, if you're building up strength or rehabbing a tendinopathy, you'll leave out the stretch initially and then build up to it. For the supernator exercise, you start off holding the bar with your palms facing downward and bending the bar in half by bringing your palms to face each other. The pronator exercise is the exact reverse of the previous one, but the progressions and concept is the same. You'll start by holding the bar with the palm of your hands facing the ceiling and bending it in half. The radial deviation exercise exercises the muscles that cause sideways movement of your wrist towards your thumb. Just like with all of these exercises, you need to increase your reps slowly or you can cause injury by overdoing it. Ulnar deviation moves the wrist towards your pinky and is used in a lot of different rehab programs to help with increasing both strengthening and body awareness. The shorter the distance between your grip and where the bar touches your knee, the harder this exercise will be. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative. Hopefully both. I made some notes. I've got quite a few things I want to cover here. So how do you know if you have good grip strength? So there's a machine, and this is one of those machines. It's called a dynamometer. A dynamometer. Uh, I bought one. 
Um, there is about $30 off Amazon.com. Um, and I'm going to do this every three months. I'm going to add this to my quarterly stats under the objective stats because this is something I think I can measure uh, regularly. Um, I checked on the internet for a table that that shows what my strength should be. There are lots of tables. They're not all exactly the same. They're all fairly close. So I ended up going with the table that's um, supplied when you buy this. It comes with a small uh, how to use um, directions leaflet if you like with the smallest writing in the world extremely annoying um, so I did use this just before I made the video I did the test my right hand grip strength is 116 pounds and my left hand was 109 pounds and four both of those put me in the strong category strong as the uh, marker is the highest you can get um, so as I said I'm going to continue to use this uh, on my three monthly stats I won't record that number when I do my next three monthly stats, I will I will do a new test and that's, that's the number I'll record. I will not use a flex bar, I will not try and train to get better grip strength, I will just carry on my normal fitness regime and I will monitor this. Hopefully it will remain strong. If it drops, it doesn't drop quicker than the table allows for my particular age. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know if you use one of these or let me know if you think you might consider it because there is obviously, uh, and it's common sense anyway, that as you lose grip strength, you also become weaker and more vulnerable to the diseases of aging. Let me know if you might uh, think about buying one of those. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.